I've been getting a lot of questions about what life has been like post drinking or without, you know, my non-alcoholic journey. But I'd also like to give a disclaimer. Number one, I know that conversations like this are often very triggering because it's about substance abuse. So I'd like to give that disclaimer that if it, this is something triggering, you might want to skip it. Um, number two, I did not have an attachment to or um, a dangerous drinking habit. It's important that I mention that because I don't want to simplify or um, make the experiences of others seem you know, less significant. I just wanted to take, make, I just wanted to get those two out of the way. Something interesting happened when I stopped drinking. And as I mentioned in the video I did where I talked about this, Choose Your Heart, I realized that I had to grieve the person that used to drink socially or maybe a little bit more than socially, maybe when she was having a bad day. I had to grieve her because there was still um, a sporadic dependence on alcohol, right? I'm having a bad day, I have some wine. I am feeling stressed out, I have some alcohol, I'm going out, whatever it, whatever it is, it was a way that I would cope, even though it didn't necessarily become this really dangerous pattern. There's every, there is every possibility that it could have been. And I think one of the reasons that I stopped, which I've never really gone into, and I'll get there when I want to, was because there was a fear about it um, spiraling or escalating to something worse. And so when I say I had to grieve her, I did have to grieve her because suddenly I had to center myself and pull out, pull into other inspirations and coping tools in order to get through whatever I was going through, right? And the other thing that people don't tell you is how much you have to face the noise in your head. Whoa. You have to become so honest with yourself without having to grab onto something. It's very scary. It is its own trigger and it's its own trauma to navigate. I remember recently, I pulled a stunt on somebody that I care about. And it was months ago, many months ago. And I was just like, sis, that was all you. That wasn't, oh, I had a drink and I did this thing. That wasn't, oh, I was probably hungover and I said this thing. That was all me. And those are the realities I've had to face of asking myself, why did you react like that? What does it mean, what does it say about what you haven't recovered from? What does it mean about your healing journey that you've not quite dug deep into? And so I have to say right now, in fact, I'm in a pretty heavy season of facing stark realities and overcoming certain wounds that I could not have seen under the guise of drinking and being in a stupor, whether it was tipsy or drunk. And so those are the two main things that I have to say have been the biggest change without drinking is grieving this person that was able to even sometimes be more fun than she is now. She's fun, she was lighter, had, you know, more lightheaded, cracked more jokes, whatever it is, you're, you're more of the, the life of the party or whatever it is. You're just more, you're more loose when you're out there. You're just chill. So grieving her and because now you're a little bit more aware of your surroundings and maybe a little bit more uptight. I still feel like I'm, I have a lot of fun when I don't drink and I go out. I don't go out much, but the few times I've had, I have, I still feel pretty good. But the other one is having to face the noise in your head because it takes you down a path of having to face your realities, your traumas, and coming to terms with your toxic traits and coming to terms with the fact that you have a lot of work that you need to do with yourself. And finally, there's an interesting concept that I came across recently about a movement abroad that brings people together, um, almost creating social activities without alcohol. Because let's face it, a lot of things are centered around drinking and alcohol. And so they do things like hiking or picnics or even parties. And the th missing thing there is alcohol. That is the one thing that brings these people together. And I wonder if that's something that might be interesting to introduce in our society in Kenya. And you guys can let me know. Um, and this is by no means a way to clap back or speak out against people who drink. Man, family and friends of mine still do. There's, I have nothing against it. It's just my reality is what activities or what can you do where alcohol doesn't have to be a factor because it's no longer my reality. So I feel like I'm wondering whether that's something that you guys might be interested in. Let me know because then who knows? It could be something that we introduce and begin creating a community of sober, sober events. <laughs> yeah, such a thing. So, that's just to answer some of the questions you've been sending me. There's a lot more I could say. I'm sure I'll come back to this every so often, but 
those are the two things that really stood out for me then. And if you are on that journey, I wish you the best. Be kind to yourself. Take it easy and try and have people around you understand that it's a journey. It's not an event.